M Gallery is honored to announce that we represent Robert Douglas Hunter. He is an icon in Living Masters painter, painters, and we are simply just humbled to carry his work. He came to visit us at the Boston Show, visit our booth with his lovely wife Liz, and was kind enough to agree to let us represent him here in Charleston. For those of you familiar with his work, his iconic style reflects all that is really great about painting that's going on today. He uh, was born in Massachusetts and uh, still uh, is located up in the Northeast and is known as the Dean of the Boston School. He is studied under Henry Henschek and Ives Gamble and has trained many, many, many fine painters that are now masters in their own right, at least 40 that we know of, and continues to be very gracious about his time. We, we just are, I can't say enough about how excited we are that we have these paintings. He's great. He's won over 30 national and regional prizes. He's a member of the Copley Society, the Guild of Boston Artists, Provincetown Art Association, and the Allied Artists of America. His paintings are in the permanent collection of the Auckland Art Museum, the Cape Cod Museum of Art, the Chrysler Art Museum, the Mary Hill Museum, the Mickelson Museum of Art, and the Southern Alleghenies Museum of Art. He has an entire wing at the Cape Cod Museum of Art that's named after him. So he's, he's truly one of the greatest living painters. We have a very special engagement uh, back in our home in Sarasota for a, a show preview uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, the 15th and 16th, uh, with a, a uh, evening champagne reception uh, courtesy of Cheryl Burke at Burke Antiques, and that's at 12 Palm Avenue. So there'll be a one evening winter salon show with uh, the selections that we have uh, from uh, Mr. Hunter, and then the paintings will move up to uh, Charleston, they'll be on display, all of them, at our location at 43 Broad. Uh, so we hope uh, that you'll get, have a chance to see them either briefly in Sarasota at our little petite winter salon or at our, our gallery location at 43 Broad. As ever, we are at 11, of course, all month with the rest of our work. We'd love to see you and uh, have a wonderful January. It's 80 today here in Charleston, so we're assuming February will be very pleasant. What follows is a, a lovely interview that Thomas Provost, uh, our, one of our gallery executives, did with uh, Mr. Hunter when he picked up his paintings at his studio. I'm sure you'll enjoy it a great deal. Hello, we are here with Robert Douglas Hunter up here in Massachusetts. All right, and um, let's see, how did you start off your career? Well. Uh, I always wanted to paint, but I went to a commercial art school because I was not in a position to uh, take the risk of being a painter, period, and uh, there just was not enough income to allow that to happen. But during that period of time, I ran into a, a very fine teacher and painter whose name was Henry Henry, who ran the Cape School of Art in Provincetown for many, many years. And a group of, of the students, former students from Professor George, went down to study with Henry, because the only one with a, a limited experience who made any sense at all about teaching. And it was a wonderful experience. He was at the full height of his powers as a painter and as a teacher. And uh, I studied with him for two summers, at which time I met our Charles Gamel. And Gamble had a studio next to Henry's class studio and needed models that summer, second summer there. And I was one of those models because he was doing a decoration for a bank in Providence. So I get to know him that way as you obviously do when you're posing with someone. Oh, yes. And I appreciated very much his keen intelligence his attitude about painting as a, as a career and a serious profession. And most of the people I knew in P-Town at the time 
really talked more about painting than they actually did it. Mm -hmm. And I was, worked at his trade seven days a week. And that's pretty wow. impressive. That's very impressive. And uh, so I was one of nearly 80 students that he had taken on over a period of 50 years. Uh, and uh, so therefore he became my principal teacher. And he taught me, me many things that he intended to pass on from his own background that were not being, as far as he knew and anyone knew, were being passed on to a younger generation. And he was happy to do it and felt that that was one of his commitments in life. So he painted allegorical pictures and he shot impressionist and academic rendering and, uh, and also encouraged us to broaden our backgrounds intellectually with a reading program. And it really was quite, quite marvelous for those of us who, who... There were times when it became a little tough because everything was so loosey-goosey at that time in training that almost anything went as art and, and he could not stomach that attitude at all. What year was this? 1940, uh, let's see, uh, 49, 1949. Well, some time ago. Mm -hmm. My word. Doesn't seem that long, but it was. Not too, too long ago. And I studied five years with him, both in Providence Town in the summer, where he had a summer studio, and in Boston at the Fenway Studio building at 30 Ipswich Street, where he had a studio and a class studio. He never took on more than two or three students at one time. Uh, but he was dedicated to that and he wrote a book in 1945 called Twilight of Painting, which has become a very important instrument for young people who wanted to an evaluation of what went on during, from roughly the First World War on in the passing on of information in art schools and he was convinced that the only way to do it is to have a small group of students and have a very intense training and uh, so he did that. As I say, he wrote this wonderful book. He's written uh, several books but this one in particular, Twilight of Painting, was a, a very impressive book that many of us, even today, reading it through, realized that he was right on target in terms of what was wrong with the education that was being mm -hmm. di dished out, which is inferior in the extreme. This is the atelier structure. So it's the atelier, yes, right, the atelier. Or it's, anyway, he, he was a very able teacher, a very able painter, and dedicated to passing that information on. And of the 80 students he had had, there were, oh, I would say 25, 26, who have made their way as professional artists throughout this country and also in Italy, mm -hmm. where some of them have started schools. And uh, so his, uh, his wish and desire and effort I think have nurtured a certain amount of, of valuable work from a young, younger generation than him. Mm -hmm. And I'm simply one of those people. Uh, that's about it. All right. oh, um, what were the names of some of those others? Oh, Richard F. Lott, who just died two years ago, who started his own atelier in Minnetonka, Minnesota, mm -hmm. um, Minneapolis, I mean, Minnesota, and ran that for 25 years and had a g group of students who excelled themselves. Uh, and uh, Robert Homer Cumming, who was a contemporary of mine, who studied with him for four or five years. Robert J. Cormier, mm -hmm. who was a very fine portrait painter, just passed on about two years ago and also was an excellent teacher. So it was a combination. He tried to nurture in all of us the need not only to paint the best we could,
but also pass on that information to yet another generation yes. of younger people. And I think it's worked out really quite well. I can't name off the top of my head large numbers of, of yes. students, but um, those three, I think, are essential in terms of the first generation of people who started with Ives himself. There are other people who stayed with him for a brief period of time and went on to uh, do other things. You yourself taught. Where did well, you teach? I taught 31 years at a, at a commercial art school that I went to, in fact. And I've taught uh, private classes, and I've long had the opportunity to have my studio open to anyone who would like a evaluation of their work mm -hmm. to come in and by appointment, obviously, and and to see his, their work. I found that you have to say, please bring in no more than five, otherwise <laughs> they'll <laughs> arrive with 20 works. Wow. <laughs> Overwhelming. me. And it's been fun for me to try to help them be better than otherwise they would be. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I've, I've gone on to study, uh, to teach a certain number of these people over a period of time too. They've, uh, some of them have done very well. The first two, serious student I ever had, Sidney Willis, who lives up in New Hampshire now and is only a few years my junior. But he was a superb student and I had a chance to work with him for a period of five or six years, which I think was helpful to him. And, uh, and he's still painting and doing very well. So that's, that's about it as far as this background is concerned. Uh, and you're painting now, even. Hmm? Now you're still painting. Oh, Lord, every day. <laughs> every day. Mostly I'm doing still lives now. But I have painted a lot of landscapes, too. And hopefully when I recover a little bit from a problem I have, and I ex expect to, come spring I'll be out painting again. Excellent. Directly from nature. I, I work directly from nature. In my case, I don't use photographs unless I'm doing a debtor. Mm -hmm. And there's not, you, you have to use a photograph then. Uh, and it's a job to be done. So you do the best you can. But it's never really totally satisfying as it is when you're working directly from nature itself. And I found that in still lives, the table still lives I've been doing for, well, I guess 60 some odd years now. And I thoroughly enjoy it. Every day is, is a new experience in designing as well as rendering, as well as the observation of being able to see the totality of nature at one glance and all the parts related to the whole visual experience. That, by the way, is a definition of Impressionist painting. To be able to see the whole at one glance and see all the parts in relationship to it. It takes a hell of a long time to do that, practice that effectively. And that's why Impressionist painting, by definition, as clearly as, as I've stated it, is very difficult to practice and takes much, much, much experience. Yes. There's no, no experience that you have. There's no replacement for hard work. You and I were talking about the United States Marine Corps, which we both yes, have had the privilege of serving for periods of time. It was a wonderful experience in the the absolute necess necessity for a strong discipline in order to work as a unit in the core. But also it improves one's own personal life when you get out of, out of the Marine Corps as well, I think. Because that attitude, I think, is very healthy no matter what you do. Yes, sir. All right, now um, you're represented by M. Gallery of Fine Art in Charleston. Well, I'm looking forward to the experience. Of, I think I've got ten paintings that are on the way, courtesy oh, of you, Tom. And yes, my jeep is packed. And hopefully, they will 
meet a clientele that will appreciate them. I hope so. Maggie seems to feel that this is going to work out well. And she said, the experience in Charleston, which I have not had. The closest I've come to Charleston was when I was stationed briefly as a uh, rifle instructor, shortly after leaving the, uh, uh, graduating from the, the, uh, Paris Island. Paris Island. Uh, I got to know Beaufort quite well, which I love. Oh, yes. I think it's a perfectly gorgeous town. And as a northerner, to be introduced at age just barely 18 to southern hospitality was pleasurable in the extreme. I adored it, absolutely adored it. And that's the closest I've come to Charleston. Perhaps I'll be in Charleston sometime soon, I hope. Oh, yes, and it will be there. <laughs> so I think that, does that do it pretty well, do you think? They... Absolutely. Thank you very much for speaking with us. And